Our itinerary for the week has been planned by our group leader, Cathy. We are to travel along all the yellow routes of the map to explore outstanding archaeological sites. Our base for the start of the week is a hotel at Gamath near Tunis, and from Wednesday we will be at a hotel on the east coast at Sousse. Voyage Jules Verne have provided a local guide, Abdullah, and driver, Fawzi. On arrival, we are whisked off to the Bardo Museum in the suburbs of Tunis to take in the wonder of its great collection of mosaics before check-in at our hotel. start to visit Carthage Museum with fine views overlooking the Bay of Carthage from the museum garden and the splendid collection inside. The ruins of the impressive Antonine Baths are bordered by the high, white walls of the Presidential Palace. We are warned not to photograph the palace or palace guards unless we want our stay to be longer than expected. Our next stop is the beautiful town of Sidi Bou Said with its blue and white buildings and delicious mint tea. Many artists and writers have lived there, including Paul Clay and André Gide. Then, on to the centre of Tunis. Our visit to the souk in the Medina is very strange, no hustle and bustle, as the shopholders are glued to their TVs and radios while President Ben Ali speaks to the nation. A giant poster of President Ben Ali oversees a strong police and militia presence on the Avenue Bourguiba. Police checks on the major road roundabouts become a familiar sight. By the end of the week, all police cars retreat to the relative safety of their compounds. It is a long drive to Chimtu, whose famous quarry supplied the Roman Empire with its finest marble. Then, on to Bularegia with more fine mosaics and unique underground villas. to travel to the Roman remains at Duga, passing flamingos on the way. It is the only time it rains, but our knowledgeable local guides make the trip a pleasure nonetheless. On the way to our second base, Zeus, our coach has a puncture, but we're soon back on our way. Karouan is the fourth most holy place in the Muslim world. The great mosque includes some recycled Roman masonry in its construction and is serenely beautiful.
the adjacent mausoleum has spectacular Islamic decoration. Souk in Karawan is closed because of the crisis, we visit the Medina at Zeus. Crowds of youths are gathering nearby, causing Abdullah some concern. We retire to the Bijou Marina of Port El Cantui for lunch and relax in the afternoon sun. Friday morning, we visit the huge Roman amphitheatre at El Gem. On arrival, Abdullah informs us that, due to a state of emergency, all civic buildings, including the museum at El Gem, are closed. Shopkeepers open up for us, however, and we enjoy a good coffee with the locals. After returning to our hotel, we walk back along the sands to El Cantui. Airports are closed, but a single aircraft flies overhead, possibly the deposed President Ben Ali on his way to Saudi Arabia. intended to be a free day, but, for our own safety, we're advised to stay in the environs of the hotel. The hotel has splendid facilities, made even better by the gift of a wristband, entitling us to free drinks during the remainder of our stay. The Mediterranean, sublimely calm, shimmers in the bright sunlight, but we can see fires up the coast at Nabu and down the coast at Monastir. The hotel management employs extra security guards on the roof because of some local looting. Staff are upset that they can't get home because of a night curfew. The BBC, CNN and the New York Times keep us informed by a Charles iPad. Our journey back to the airport at Tunis is full of tension. We pass empty toll booths, gatherings at villages, the railway station which has been under attack, a military tank at the clock tower in Avenue Bourguiba, and Ben Ali's poster symbolically cut down from a building. There are vehicle checks at that airport and organised chaos, but our British Airways flight arrives to take us home. We leave Tunisia at the very beginning of the Arab Spring. <laughs> 